Grace and peace to you from God and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever you find yourselves this moment, know that you are a beloved child of God and always have a home in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. In the transitions of our lives, O God, in the changing seasons, in our eternal spinning round this sun, welcome us home in one another and in you. In the struggles we face, in the pain that we bear, in the hope that we hold and the justice that we seek, help us to see each other as you see us and to see you in ourselves. Today and every day, open our hearts in this place and every place. Show us your love in our lives and in every life. Make your image shine. Alleluia. Amen. John recounts the temple clearing quite early in Jesus' ministry, whereas the Synoptic Gospels place the event near the end of Jesus' life. This is a fitting time for us to recount this story. Like Lent, the build-up to Passover was a season of preparation and reflection. So in those familiar words of a very passionate Messiah, let us listen for God's living word to us this day. A reading from the second chapter of the Gospel of John. The Passover was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated there at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. Now the temple authorities then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Then they asked, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? Then John tells us Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body after he was raised from the dead. His disciples remembered that he had said these things and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice, himself with mirth his praise foretell. Come ye before him and
John's Gospel recounts the temple clearing quite early in Christ's ministry, whereas the other Gospels place the event towards the end of Christ's life. I think it's a fitting story for us to remember during this Lenten season, because Lent, like the build-up to Passover, is meant to be a season of preparation and reflection. So in these familiar words of a passionate Messiah, let us listen for the living word of God to us from the second chapter of John's Gospel. The Passover was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and the money changers sitting at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The temple authorities then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up, Jesus answered them. Then they asked, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? And then John tells us he was speaking of the temple of his body after he was raised from the dead. And his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the word and the scripture that Jesus had spoken. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, Jesus reminds us that we cannot sell holiness. God has promised to be with us wherever we are. And so God is finally beyond the holiness of the temple. For all space is sacred space. And we should always be attentive to the ways in which we try to confine God to a particular building or a particular place. This doesn't take away from the sacredness of spaces. It doesn't detract from the beauty of a sanctuary. The holiness of a holy site, the mystery of a thin place, is still there. Rather than containing the divine, these places point us to that larger presence of God. They remind us that all of time and space is sacred to God. And they warn us that it's dangerous when we try to commodify the divine, when we try to control those who will have access to God. For Jesus teaches us always to be more concerned about people than purity. The holiness of a place serves to point us to holiness everywhere, God is not only found in the temple. God is everywhere. And at the end of the passage, Jesus preaches that he himself will become the temple, the vessel, the incarnation of God, pleased as man with man to dwell, the Christmas hymn sings, Jesus our Emmanuel. Jesus has left the building. Because in this sense, Jesus is the building. Jesus is the temple, the abode of the divine, but so much more than that. A generation ago, Bart reminded us that in Christ Jesus, we see God everywhere. And so to feel a special connection to God in church, at the seaside up on top of a mountain, is to be connected to God who is everywhere. No temple tax. No burnt offerings needed. To feel the presence of God in one place is to attune ourselves to the presence of God in every place. And so it is that when we see the image of God in work in our dear friends or beloved family, it reminds us to seek the image of God in all people. For that's the mystery and majesty of the Incarnation. We soon hope to move back to worshiping together. And it's important that we gather together. And our churches are beautiful. And at their best, they pull our eyes towards the heavens. And they lift up our souls towards God. But they are not God. They are not singular vessels of the divine. Jesus does not live behind the organ like I thought as a child. As important it is, for us to worship together. 
it's more important for us to worship together safely. Jesus was always more concerned for people than purity. So until we meet again face to face, know that there is no access fee to God. Pleased as man with man to dwell, Jesus is our Emmanuel, with us, for us, no matter your biography, your biology, your theology, or your ideology, God is with you. No matter your geography or genealogy, God is for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Friends, let us pray. You are above us, O Christ, you are within. You are in all things yet contained by no thing. Yours is the presence without whom there is no present. So lead us into the heart of this present moment that we might hear the heartbeat of your eternal presence. For at the beginning of time and at the end, you are God and we bless you. In the opening of the day and at its close, in our waking, in our sleeping, you are God and we bless you. So teach us to seek you in all that has life, that we might see you as the light of life. Teach us to search for you in our own depths, that we might find you in every living soul. And help us to pray as Christ Jesus himself taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all now and beyond forever. Amen. Amen.